Namaste everyone. We all know that management teachers have one key role to play and that is research. Now while research is the key, uh, along with that the question comes that what is our role within the research in the terms of uh, the broader area. Now one thing that the management teachers can do is research on the policy. Now traditionally it is believed that the management teachers research should basically be for the corporate. But uh, do you know that uh, taking cognizance of the fact that uh, the social science research is so crucial and the role of teachers uh, or their ideas in giving the inputs to the policy makers or the think tank is very important. The ministry of HRD has recently come out with the impress scheme uh, through the ICSSR. And uh, about uh, one month back, it was uh, when I was uh, just watching that uh, uh, our honorable minister for HRD has launched the scheme. And uh, I think the entire teaching community was thrilled to find that about 414 crores have been allocated by the ministry for the purpose of this impress scheme. And in this impress scheme, uh, uh, there will be four cycles across two years in which so many projects would be given to the teachers. Now, uh, this is a very good opportunity because uh, traditionally the management discipline has always taken something or the other from the different branches and then come up with something which is constructive for the society. Now, one more thing that uh, now what, what the management teachers can do now is that they can give back in the form of inputs in the policy research. So, uh, taking a leaf out of that, uh, today I have some of my colleagues who would like to mention some of the ideas which will be kind of action research. And mind you, uh, in some of the previous modules, we have talked about the grassroots issues and happiness and we have talked about how to carry research. So, this module basically is an action based module. It is uh, an applied module in which we are trying to tell you that what you can do in the area of policy research. And uh, therefore, uh, we feel that uh, uh, please be attentive uh, throughout this module because you will just find out that what the uh, uh, young researchers have to say or what they are planning uh, when it comes to the policy research. So, we have seen some ideas. We have seen that how the policy think tank can get the benefit uh, uh, from uh, the young researchers who would like to research in the area of financial literacy, in the area of employability, in the area of uh, knowing that what can be done as far as the uh, internship of the students are concerned and taking it up on the policy perspective and also uh, in the banking domain. So, one thing is clear that we as management teachers, if we do something and we uh, and our inputs are important for our policy makers, that is going to tremendously benefit our nation. And I think at the end of the day, the kind of satisfaction that we are going to have will be a unique one because nothing like it if what we do uh, comes in the form of ideas which helps the policy think tank. So, I trust that in this module when we try to tell you some of uh, the areas in which you also can carry the research, uh, this uh, would motivate you to think about the research in different forms. For example, you can be uh, you can apply for the projects uh, at the ICSR that is one thing. Second thing is that you can even reach out to corporate who are these uh, who are very eager to help the management teachers in carrying those kind of researches which can help the policy decision making. And finally, you can also uh, carry the mission along with the student volunteers in which you carry some action based research and the output in the form of some kind of policy ideas can be uh, shared. And I will say that one thing that over these few years things have opened up so well and today people are ready to receive the ideas at all the levels you have the social media and everything. So, if you do a research and the ideas are there then whether it is the area of urbanization, uh, urban infrastructure or whether it is education, whether it is uh, macroeconomics, whether it is uh, personal finance, whether digital literacy, whatever be the area, there are people, there are um, um, all the experts who are ready to take up ideas from you. So, get started.
banking has developed in the last decade. I, being an ex-banker and spent many of my years in banking, many areas of banking has attracted my attention, but in particular, credit. Credit is something that is affecting the banking position day in and day out. So, my area of interest became credit. Accordingly, I decided to develop my project and topic in credit. My background of credit research goes to my thesis, wherein I studied Basel Accords, one of the basic credit management policies that the banks are adopting nowadays. In this situation, while developing the project, my focus also went on the Indian credit policy management. We in India have an RBI credit policy and along with it, it gives us a broad view that how the credits of the banks must be managed. But it doesn't make them compulsory to follow those norms. Here, my project just wanders around this aspect. We plan to de develop a credit policy or a credit management policy in view that can be a model policy for everyone that every bank can adopt. We wish to develop a model where, which can be simulated in all the banks. Along with it, we want to follow the RBI policies. But at end, when the loans fail, we go to the IBC, that is Insolvency and the Bankruptcy Code of India. We want to develop a model wherein IBC is also imbibed in it. Thus, the project proposal will go around all this. While developing the project or the proposal, what I first did was, I first went through the literature review and find, started to find out what are the gaps lying in it. Those gaps came out to be the major lacuna of the simulation of the credit policy of the banks in India. Along with it, I found a research gap that there was very less research done on this. Thus, my model will be dealing around it. Along with this, we will be even interviewing certain bankers to get their idea what they think about the credit policy of India. Or the topic of my research will be developing a policy initiative and a model of credit management in Indian banks in line with the RBI policy and IBC that is Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code of India. Along with it, we will also try to give a very good framework for the banks to manage their NPAs which is a grieving problem nowadays. Thank you. The citizen of any nation can be benefited when the outcomes are delivered with the public services. The outcomes are considered more important than mere compliances. Armstrong and Barron 2004 defined the performance management as a process which contributes towards the effective management of individual and team in order to achieve the high level of organizational performance. With this aim, the Government of India adopted the initiatives of e samiksha and Pragati, which affect or evaluate the performance of various government projects. Hence, this can be the area of research where we can evaluate the performance of these government initiatives and suggestions can be made. Further, the ideas from Indian scriptures like Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana and Chanakya Niti also be incorporated and recommendation can be made in a way which suggests the effective and efficient implementation of those government policies and the projects. Thus, this study can be impact assessment which investigate the scenario before and after the implementation of these projects and initiatives, e-samiksha and pragati. Developing a research proposal is a challenging task in present era because a clear and well thought research proposal and plan is a backbone for any research. Firstly, we have to identify the research gap. Through literature review, we came to know that there is a gap lies between the formulation and the implementation of various government policies which affect the performance of government projects. Only few research was conducted on e-samiksha and pragati initiatives of Government of India and also less number of research was done on performance management with respect to the Government of India, which create the impetus for the study. Now, second question arises how these studies will contribute towards the efficient and implementation of government projects and how they evaluate the performance of these projects. 
what is the relevance of the study most of the studies focuses towards the loopholes rather than positive aspects thus the outcome of this research study will contributes towards the better perception of policy maker bureaucrats government among the citizens this would ultimately lead to the better governance the topic of my proposal is financial literacy policy initiative special reference to rajasthan and delhi ncr the topic of financial uh, financial literacy always lured me as i have associated with this topic from last 6 to 7 year i did my phd also in financial capability and also associated with sebi as a resource person for their financial education awareness program my study revealed that women are financial incapable and there is a wide gap in actual and perceived knowledge of financial matters in fact uh, persons think that they have knowledge about budgeting about money matters management of money retirement planning tax planning but in reality they don't a global survey done by standard and poors financial services showed that nearly 76% of indian adult population does not understand even the basic financial concepts even the report of ada showed in their handbook 2015-16 that due to lack of proper awareness and institutional barriers people buy insurance policies without proper planning and give up these in midway as they do not have money to pay the premium report also represented that 40% policies were not renewed after 13 months and after 5 years this percentage is only one third it means only one third policies renewed there is a lack of women centric financial products and all financial literacy program are conducted under the recommendations of oecd and lack of indigenous and sustainable factors so all these points motivate me to develop this proposal so that i can give some suggestions in reframing financial literacy policy for rajasthan and delhi ncr region this proposal is about reframing the financial literacy policy we know that there are different institution like rbi sebi nabard nism ida public and private banks put their efforts for improving financial literacy as a financial literacy is the major objective of financial inclusion the major objective of any financial literacy program should be to bring the behavioral change in person of a respective reason but the data as per ncfe 2014 showed that financial literacy rate of rajasthan and delhi ncr is 20% and 32% respectively it has been observed that financial literacy program focused on just imparting knowledge rarely deliver impact unless they are backed by a suitable product people are aware of financial product but they are not able to use this product according to their requirement because need of every section is different from another one so this project would suggest the recommendations to policy makers and financial agencies that they need to adopt two strategies in promoting financial literacy so that these financial pro policy programs can successfully achieve financial inclusion in meaningful way one by developing personal financial management skills and second by developing financial operation skills for availing various financial services for financial well-being of a person and this could help socially deprived and oppressed person of society this would also this project would also suggest some recommendations for some special measures for women because the financial behavior of women influenced by different factors like patriarchal society lack of confidence and interest in financial matters so there is need to take some special reforms also with the initiative of all financial institutions the proposed topic is employability condition and 
cheap labor addressing the internship challenges in india with special reference to women students in ncr and rajasthan i usually do research in the domain of hr while guiding the mba students i came across the issue of paid and unpaid internships and going through various literature reviews and papers on internships and employability it was found that no such emphasis was given regarding the the paid internships this prompted me to develop this proposal according to aristotle knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom in 2012 the international labor conference issued a resolution to formulate policies in regulating youth employment crisis by taking immediate and targeted action the priority of the government is to adequately recognize the labor work of an individual which is evident from the word shram mev jayate internships are integral part of the practical course of studies for getting tuned to the employment skills and abilities the trainees during internships are expected to discharge the entrusted responsibility responsibilities of the employer in return of no determined compensation there are no proper methods or standards prescribed to regulate the obligations of the employer in this direction of protecting the interests of the unpaid interns an intern's function is to primarily impress the employer by best of his abilities to land on the dream job assuming the trusted responsibilities and in return commonly gets disregarded by the employer in providing adequate remuneration and appreciation unpaid internships are not prohibited in india whereas in many developed nations such as usa uk and japan and also in canada etc it is not permitted the proposal is all about enacting new policies regulating the unpaid internship of students by the employers in india the procedure will be the number of uh, respondents would be around 500 and the population will consist of girl students of school colleges and universities in the rural and urban areas of ncr and rajasthan and judgment sampling will be used the methods of data collection will be a questionnaire focus discussions interviews etc and the various sources of data will be a well structured questionnaire will be used to collect the primary data secondary data for the study will be collected from reputed journals magazines periodicals websites etc the present research shall primarily be based upon raw information obtained directly from the students who have undergone internship during their course of studies which shall assist to develop an idea of the level of exploitation faced by them
the present research shall primarily based upon raw information obtained directly from the level of exploitation faced by them commonly the concerns of interns get ignored in obtaining desired responses and absence of effective legislations press interns right to deep and shedding the desire and readiness to work creating future obstacles in their minds india is known to have one of the highest number of legislations but somewhere till date no proper laws have been enacted to protect the rights and interests of the interns factories act apprenticeship act workmen's compensation act have no clear provisions regulating such conditions through this project we intend to formulate a model by collecting raw data from women students of colleges and universities of ncr and rajasthan who have experienced exploitation the relevance of the proposed study for the society is in line with its rich history and culture and global practices india is striving to empower women and allowing unpaid internship culture would affect devastatingly interns are to be protected against workplace discrimination from unregulated culture of unpaid internships and in this regard a working model is proposed to be developed through which the rights of the interns in india can be protected in developing effective policy